Welcome to this jazz tutorial on Joe Beam's timeless classic, The Girl from Ipanema. Let's take a closer look at the intricate harmony of this song. Take a listen to this. In this video, we'll see how Joe Beam's use of out of the ordinary dominant chords is simply brilliant. It's no wonder why Joe Beam is known for pushing the boundaries of traditional harmony, always keeping us on our toes with unexpected yet stunning chord progressions. No matter how much you think you know about jazz harmony, Joe Beam's genius will continue to challenge and inspire you. Be sure to stick around to the end of the video where I'll show you how to download a PDF of today's lesson. So what makes the girl from Ipanema so special? Well, let me tell you, it's all about Joe Beam's interesting use of dominant chords. Dominant chords are usually used as primary or secondary five chords, but Joe Beam switches it up by avoiding these functions most of the time. Even when he does use them in the progression, he adds his own unique twist to keep things interesting. Let's take a look at measure six. If you listen closely, you'll notice that the chord progression is a reharmonization of a typical 2-5-1. But instead of using the 5 chord, Joe Bean gets creative and replaces it with a sub-5, giving us a 2-sub-5-1 path. Here's where it gets even more interesting. Normally, the sub-5 is paired with the Lydian flat 7 scale, creating a 7-sharp-11 chord. However, Joe Bean turns the sharp-11 into a flat-5, making it a chord tone and eliminating the natural five altogether. This little trick adds a unique flavor to the progression and sheds light on Joe Beam's treatment of dominant chords. At first glance, the G7 in measure three might seem like a five of five. In fact, the five of five is a great chord to use when targeting a two five progression, which is just a five chord that's been embellished with an interpolated two chord right before it. Let's take the example of the key of F major. The C7 chord is the 5-7, and we can target it with its 5 chord, which is G7. This tonicizes the 5 chord, which then resolves to the 1 chord, which in this case would be F. This gives us a standard and effective progression. 1, 5 of 5, 5 to 1. Now if we interpolate the related 2 before the 5, we get F major 7, G7, G minor 7, C7 to F major 7. This turns the progression into a 1 major 7, 5 of 5, 2 minor 7, 5, 1. But here's where things get interesting. In the Girl from Ipanema, the G7 chord sounds much better when paired with the Lydian flat 7 scale, turning the G7 into a G7 sharp 11. This is a dominant chord with a sharp 11, and thus turns the G7 into a 2-7 chord. And yes, the 2-7 is a real function. This 2-7 chord is very closely related to the 5 of 5, but it's a 7-sharp 11 chord. You'll find this chord in many jazz standards, like in Take the A-Train, and also Desafinado, another Joe Beam song. So the path, 1 major 7, 5 of 5, 2, 5, 1, turns into a 1 major 7, 2, 7, sharp 11, 2, 5, 1. And if you listen to great jazz players, you'll hear how they use the sharp 11 in their lines when they improvise over that G7 chord. But as we said before, Joe Beam takes it one step further and reharmonizes the five chord with the sub five and reinterprets the sharp 11 as the flat five, turning the G flat seven into a G flat seven flat five. This reharmonization turns this into this. This is a testament to Joe Beam's genius and creativity, as he was able to take a common chord progression and completely transform it into something unique 
and beautiful. But things get really interesting in the B section when we analyze the dominant chords B7, D7, and E flat 7. At first glance, they seem to not follow any pattern at all, but a clue is hidden in the melody. When we look at the roots of these dominant chords, we see a modulation pattern of a minor third up and then a half step up, which is exactly the modulation pattern in the melody. But what's the function of these dominant chords? And where's the tonic? The trick is to understand dominant chords as Joe Beam does. They're not primary or secondary dominant chords, but rather flat seven seven chords borrowed from the minor mode. The flat seven seven chord is a great modal interchange chord that's usually preceded by the four minor chord, targeting the one chord in a progression known as the backdoor progression. In fact, we could just replace the five chord with the flat seven seven in a two five progression if we wanted to. And that's exactly what Joe Beam is doing here. We actually have an entire video dedicated to the flat seven seven chord. So be sure to check that out after you finish watching this. So if we consider these three dominant chords in the B section as flat seven seven chords, then they should all be paired with the Lydian flat seven scale becoming seven sharp 11 chords. By reharmonizing the G flat major seven in the first measure of the B section with an E flat minor seven Dorian, we now have an entire sequence of two minor seven to flat seven seven chords. E flat minor seven to B seven sharp 11 is a two flat seven seven in the key of D flat. Modulating up a minor third gets us to F sharp minor seven to D seven sharp 11. Also a two flat seven seven, but now in the key of E. And if we modulate up again, this time a half step, we get G minor seven to E flat seven, which is also a two flat seven seven. Only now we're back in the original key of F major. All these dominant chords are functioning as flat seven sevens, and the first chords are two minor sevens. We just need to reharmonize the first two in D flat major with a G flat major seven. Don't forget that the G flat major seven is the full chord in the key of D flat. And the four chord is a very common reharmonization of the two chord and vice versa, both of them belonging to the sub dominant region. Once we understand this interpretation of the harmony, we can see how creative and tricky Joe Beam is at reharmonization. The G flat major seven chord throws everyone off at first because it seems like a modulation a half step up, but in reality, it's the four chord in the key of D flat and is actually functioning as a Lydian chord. So the actual modulation is from F major to D flat major, a major third down. And Joe Beam gets back to the original key by modulating first a minor third up and then a half step up. When we look at this sequence in the map, it becomes obvious what's going on in the B section. The harmonic movement is exactly the same in all three iterations of the sequence, from the subdominant to the dominant, but never actually resolving to the one major seven of the current key. It's simply genius. So there you have it, the genius behind Antonio Carlos Jobim's harmonic progressions. If you're fascinated by the intricate details of harmony in music and want to explore it further, I highly recommend getting the Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro app available for Mac, iPhone, and iPad. With its comprehensive features and tools, you can dive deeply into the world of tonal harmony and analyze any piece of music that you want. So why not give it a try and see where your musical curiosity takes you. All of our members will receive a PDF with today's topic. If you're not a member yet, you can become one by clicking on the join button or the link provided down below. And remember, you can access all of our previous exclusive access content by getting our music theory journal available on mdex.com. YouTube seems to think you're gonna like one of these two videos here, so stick around and check them out. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.